Hello, friends. Welcome back to the Test Those Breasts podcast. I am your host, Jamie Vaughn. I'm a retired teacher of 20 years and a breast cancer thriver turned staunch, unapologetic, loud supporter and advocate for others, bringing education and awareness through a myriad of medical experts, therapists, caregivers, and other survivors. A breast cancer diagnosis is incredibly overwhelming with the mounds of information out there, especially on Dr. Google. I get it. I'm not a doctor, and I know how important it is to uncover accurate information, which is my ongoing mission through my nonprofit. The podcast includes personal stories and opinions from breast cancer survivors and professional physicians, providing the most up-to-date information at the time of recording. Evidence, research, and practices are always changing, so please check the date of the recording and always refer to your medical professionals for the most up-to-date information. I hope you find this podcast a source of inspiration and support from my guests. Their contact information is in the show notes, so please feel free to reach out to them. We have an enormous breast cancer community ready to support you in so many ways. Now let's listen to the next episode of Test Those Breasts. Well, hey, friends, welcome back to this episode of Test Those Breasts. I am your host, Jamie Vaughn, and today I have my friend Maureen Stevenson on my show. Maureen is a certified nutrition health coach and breast cancer survivor and is leading a leading figure in helping women navigate their menopausal years. Her expertise in holistic wellness, particularly in nutrition, fitness, and overall well-being is unparalleled. She offers personalized coaching programs tailored to women aged 30 to 90, all driven by her journey to overcome health challenges. As a partner with Amari Global, a leading mental wellness company, Maureen aims to revolutionize gut health. One of her signature programs is the Bigger Gainer subtitle, and it's a testament to her unwavering commitment to her cause and reflects her belief in the power of self-care. Beyond her professional life, Maureen enjoys spending time with her 125-pound Cane Corso Bolo and indulging in leisure activities. To schedule a complimentary session or find ongoing inspiration, visit cwrfitness.com or join her Facebook group, Finish Life Strong. And I will have all of that stuff in the show notes. Well, Maureen, hello. How are you today? I am fine. Thank you for the privilege of having me on your platform. (laughs) I'm so honored and humble. Well, you are so welcome. (laughs) Well, we have tried to do this a couple times. I actually interviewed you quite a few months ago, early on, really in my podcasting. And we had some technical difficulties. So we've been trying to connect ever since. But we also have been on Facebook together and we follow each other's journeys. And I'm always so impressed and excited about your posts because you're such a vibrant, amazing woman, you know, strong in her convictions. You're an excellent stylist. Your style is something that is to be admired. And I'm just always excited to see your new outfit for the day. But that all came with some things that happened in your life. And you just became the person that you are because of your lived experience. And we can talk about that a little bit, you know, alongside with your breast cancer. But I guess usually what I ask people is that I want to know who the person was before breast cancer, because I don't know about you, but I've changed over time. I mean, we all change anyway, but when you go through a breast cancer diagnosis and treatments and all that, and into your survivorship, you kind of understand in hindsight how you used to be and who you are today. So who was Maureen Stevenson before breast cancer? Oh, so Maureen Stevenson before breast cancer was like a workaholic. (laughs) I would say I immigrate here from Jamaica and with an eight-year-old daughter. And so I always say, you know, I run away here. And so Maureen was that. She ran away from an abusive relationship and she took her daughter and came to a foreign country. So with that, I used to do like two and three jobs, you know, have my daughter in daycare or after school. And I used to do that. But there's a pivotal moment in my life when I turned like in my 40s. And I could not get out of bed. Like, if I get out of bed and go into the light, I was crazy, literally. 
and I started to think about like, and it felt like somebody used some a bat and beat my joints, like literally beat up my joints. And I was like, what's going on? I actually went and see my doctor and she told me about perimenopausal and that um, she wanted to put me on Prozac. I'm not here to say anything bad about the, the drugs or anything because I didn't know about it at that time. But then as a child, I couldn't take meds and as my mom used to have to crush it for me in water. And so I was protesting with my doctor and she's like, oh, there's another alternative if you would change your lifestyle to nutrition and um, exercise, you get the same serotonin uptake. And I was like, what are you talking about? Because all those things were foreign to me. And so that was Maureen's journey before. And then I came home and later on found something said physical fitness specialist at American College. And I decided that I was going to try it. And then my whole life changed. Like I just became alive again, like everything that was Going on, I just started to feel better and better in my own body. And so I did not actually take the drugs because when I looked at the side effect, I was like, oh, my God, I don't want to be sick. I'm sick already. <laughs> I wanted to right. get well. Right. And then my doctor told me, like, my body makes the same uptake and I could get the same mood and all of that if I change my diet and my lifestyle. So in the program at ARC, you know, going about my business, like, hey, nothing's wrong. But. I was restless with my mammogram. My mammogram did not happen as usual as I said it. Is. And I was like, it's the year is finishing and, and it's finished and I'm going to take my mammogram. So I was like, oh, so I went and took my mammogram and hold and behold, the doctor called me back. Like, we need to see you again. And I'm like, OK, <laughs> so, you know, not thinking anything. And then I went in there and then she's like, we need to do a biopsy. I'm like, biopsy? What's going on? And so finally, after I did that, a lady called me over the phone and she was like, you have cancer. We found breast cancer and she was gone. She never like stayed on the phone. She was gone. I was at work. And then that night I go to work like 3 to 11 and driving home. And I said to myself, like, what this stupid woman called me and said to me? Because it just resurrected and it just connected, right? <laughs> And then I was mad. You know, I was mad. It's like, I was mad at maybe at her because I was like, there's a better approach. And so yes. I called the place where I did the test and I was mad at them too. I was like, I don't understand how someone would just call you at work and I could get an accident home or whatever. But I wasn't thinking about it, you know. And so my journey started there. And um, I was asked to see the specialist or the doctor, the head of the department, and they didn't want to let me see him because they were like, no, it's not protocol. I was like, ah, it's my body. I need to figure this out. And so with advocating for myself, I was able to actually see him and ask him these questions. And then, you know, I found out that I had DSE, breast cancer, and uh, my journey began there in 2013. <laughs> when were you diagnosed? I was diagnosed 2013. 2013. So yeah, I would think by that time, there would be some empathy in the way and compassion mm -hmm. in the way a doctor would tell you that you have breast cancer. It wasn't. That was not your experience. Yeah, I just found that I worked over the phone. I was working like 3 to 11 that evening because I used to go to my class in the daytime and I worked at 3 to 11. And it was actually on the freeway driving home that it really connected to me that you know, that people say people are in denial or whatever. I don't know if it was denial or what. I was health like for me, I was healthy or I was just trying to get back to health or my mojo, I would say, because I was lethargic. I was feeling all these pains in my body and I didn't know what perimenopausal is. And that even that, that young age, you could be like dried up. I call myself dried up. Because How old were you again? I was like 45, 46. Okay, so you had just escaped a relationship and it was traumatic. You left Jamaica, you come to America, you have a lot of stress going on because you're escaping from danger and all of that, right? You've got, you're a single mom now, you go through this depression and then you've pulled yourself out, you became healthy. So you were healthy when you got breast cancer. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. I was just, yeah. I was on my journey of rediscovering, re-energizing, like, yeah, yeah, you know? And I so all I remember that was like the first time I was running a mile and I ran my mile like under nine minutes or whatever, you know? That was the furthest thing from my mind. And then nobody yeah. ever in my 
family has ever had breast cancer or was diagnosed with it or anything like you know my immediate family like my mom and stuff like that so nobody had even any experience to it so when I was telling them I was like I got bad news and I got good news which one do you want to hear first so I made sure I have everybody on the line who I want to tell and then I told my mom like hey do not spread this like I just want it here but of course my mom didn't listen (laughs) but but yeah and then some people like shout at me Some people scream like me. My friend called me a liar. She was like, you know, yeah, she's like, because those outbursts come. What? Yeah. And I was like, okay, I get it. It takes me a while to like sit in it too. But my friend was like, you're a liar. You're lying. (laughs) It's just like, so there were, I was like mostly scared for myself, but I was like scared for my family. Like those, because those were the most amazing outbursts. You would like, okay. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So was your friend kidding or was she seriously calling you a liar? She was calling me a liar because she didn't think that, I guess, from fear to like. Was she thinking you were just joking or? I don't know. She just told me that I'm a liar. Like I think she was thinking that I'm lying. I wanted to say like, for me at the time when I was telling them, I was like, I can be a downer, but after a downer, I'm a fighter. Like, I have that kind of spirit. They know me like, okay, I have that type of spirit. Like, why would you call me and tell me such a thing? Because I'm thinking that they might be thinking that I'm too young or, you know, it just was an outburst. I don't know how to take the outburst, but I was like, okay, sit in it a little bit and then we can talk about it. It's interesting. Our stories are some sort of similar in that. I was super healthy. I was unhealthy before. About a year and a half prior to getting the breast cancer, I really pulled myself out of that. And I've always been really healthy all my life. But then during COVID, I kind of got a little unhealthy. But then I really, really got my act together, got myself back into shape, ate really well, didn't drink a lot at all. I mean, I hardly, I mean, I really had cut back on a lot of really not good stuff. And then I get this breast cancer and I was pretty blown away too, because I was healthy. And I had a lot of people who said, oh my God, but Jamie, you're so healthy. And I thought to myself, yeah, I am. So they were blown away that I even had breast cancer because I was healthy. And as you and I know, healthy people can get breast cancer too, right? It doesn't discriminate at all. But the good news is, is that If you are healthy when you get breast cancer, we do know that you can move through the treatments a lot better than if you were not healthy, right? Which is where we're going to go in just a little bit because of what you do. But I also didn't have it in my family. There is cancer in my family. Mm -hmm. But when I did the comprehensive genetics test, it didn't have anything. It didn't show up anything. And no one has had breast cancer in my family. So I was pretty shocked about that. And then, of course, we know that most people who get breast cancer don't even have it in their family, which is strange. It's strange to know that, that more people get breast cancer that don't have the genetic disposition, right? So, Right. I don't even drink. Like when I'm talking about, I don't drink alcohol at all. I don't Mm -hmm. smoke. At the time in we taking the fitness course at ARC have just started to eat good, like eat good. And the juice started coming back in my vagina. And I was just, you know, I was just uh-huh. on that role, like that healthy role. So I was like, ah! and I think why my friend probably called me a liar because she saw me running miles and you know what I mean? She couldn't re- realize that. I'm, how did these things happen? But you know, uh-huh. yeah. Well, there's a lot of myths. So this is what we do on this podcast in a lot of ways is we myth bust. So to your friend, do you guys still talk? Yeah, we're still friends. Do you joke about it now? I would imagine. Yeah. We laughed about it all the time. Like, because my friend is a person, like if she see a pimper on her thing, she goes to like, I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm like, girl, you're not dying. It's a pimper. (laughs) <laughs> what is your friend's name oh my friend's name is Delid, and she uh yeah Dolores D- Delid. she goes by Delid. Dolores right, but I- hi Dolores yeah <laughs> I hope Dolores listens to this I think it's super comical actually but I mean seriously even my friends were like there's no way they were pretty blown away too and since then of course we learned so much and then in our survivorship 
this is where we come in where, you know, we help um, myth bust. And so about healthy bodies and health, how healthy body, we all have cancer cells, right? Mm -hmm. One of my therapist friends early on told me that it's just like this perfect storm, right? So we could be going along, just having a great old time, being all healthy and all the things, which is great. You want to eat well. You probably shouldn't be drinking. I know there's research behind drinking alcohol and breast cancer. Katie Kirk talks about it all the time. I would love to have her on this show to speak to my audience about that alcohol. And right before I got breast cancer, I would say it was probably about a year and a half where if I was going to have something to drink, because I was a drinker before that, like that's just how I grew up, right? And so- what I would do is I weaned myself off of alcohol is what happened. So by the time I got breast cancer, yeah, yeah I mean, I and so I'll have, I'll have a little bit something here and there, but it's very rare, but that made it easier for me not to drink any alcohol at all during breast cancer. And I know people who have do drink during breast cancer and which is just like, it blows my mind. You shouldn't, but anyway, there is a lot of research. So myth busting and helping friends understand and family members understand so much more. This is why I like it when people who have never had breast cancer listen to these podcast episodes, because I really feel like there's so many things that we didn't know before breast cancer that we wish we probably would have known. Yes. And so I really try to speak to those people as well. So in your survivorship, you've taken all of this you're leaving your husband and you know, you single mom, you're here in the United States, you go through depression, you get healthier, you get breast cancer, you go through these treatments. What are you doing in your survivorship to help people? Well, today, that whole life journey just cascaded me. When people see me today, and they're like, one of my greatest thing I tell people that I was shy, I'm very shy. And they'd be like, no, you are not. <laughs> And I'm like, yes, I am. But it helps me to be an advocate. And when I said advocate, it's like what you were talking to about, like, yeah, it's not in our family. We may be healthy, but beyond being healthy, we have to take care of our inner parts or inner self. And so one of the things like what before breast cancer, I used to be like, okay, you know, when I looked at exercise, I was like, hey, you got to go hard. And it was just like a physical thing for me. And I didn't think about like the emotional aspect of it. I, I didn't think about the that the inside that we go in and then all of what comes out of us just shine. So then I, I started to make the connection that it was more than just physical, it's mental, it's spiritual, it's it's us being an old person. So today I became a health and wellness coach, not necessarily was to talk to anybody, but I wanted to know more. I wanted to know more because I was like, Every time people are like, hey, you're caught up in the whole cycle of... So I would say that today, the foundation that I really teach women is that wellness is not just about surviving. It's about thriving, right? It's to look at all aspects of your life and to look at nutrition as one of the weaker. Because before, when I was in my... I was in the program and I was diagnosed with um, breast cancer, right. it was through my nutrition that really helps me and... That really helps me because I remember when I go to my doctors, they were like, oh, my God, you're healing so fast. All my doctors was amazed at the healing process that happens through my journey. And it's going back to that you were saying it's because you're healthy. So when you're healthy, your journey becomes a little bit more easier and um, it becomes a little bit more faster for healing to happen because you have that foundation piece already in it. Right. And so today I teach that I teach vibrant living. I believe in everything vibrant. I became <laughs> such a different person that um, even my family members, I'm like, how are you here? <laughs> like, they don't understand me. But now that they're getting into me that I'm not a new person, I'm just an emerging person. Yes. That vibrancy comes from inside. And today I want every woman to know that it's inside of us, inside of us, if we take the time to connect, to connect to that whole. You self, reinvented yourself is what you did. Who we are. <laughs> that's what my, that's what yeah. everybody said. Absolutely. Everybody says, oh my God, the journey just make you become like the merging butterfly. Like, you know, it just make you fly. But it's these grounding pieces that 
it's so powerful to know that it's inside of all of us. But I think because we run so much in this busy, busy world and we're just busy all the time, we don't remember the, the fact that stress is a killer and stress is that piece that most of us don't get time to connect to ourselves. So that's what I teach. I teach connectivity, to connect to yourself, just to remember that you remember that important piece, person in the equation of getting well. I love you. that. And you said that you're a shy person. I discovered recently that there's such thing as an extroverted introvert. <laughs> I mean, in some cases, I'm kind of a little standoffish and, and a little bit shy. Nobody would ever say that about me, but there, I really do kind of get that way in certain circumstances. But I think that when you're doing what makes you shine, so what you do makes you shine. It's very intentional, but it's also very natural for you in what you're doing. And in other circumstances, you might be shy. So I was a school teacher for 20 years and I was very outgoing. Ooh. And, you know, when I was like on stage, if you will, and it's a little bit different mm -hmm. than other places I might be. And I know other people outside of work would say, Jamie, that is not true. Like you are so bold and outgoing and all this. While a lot of that is true, there are circumstances where I'm not. I feel really super anxious and things like that. But your social media presence, I see you as very outgoing, but I can see where you could be shy as well. So it's good to have a little bit. <laughs> yeah. When people see me, like, if you're around me, like, I'm more of a person who gets to sit back and just lay back in the and just yeah. watch and just take it in. And, and listen. Like, okay. No, that's not you. You're bold. You're bold. You're confident. The whole journey of health is that it teaches me that health is not just physical. You know, health is about emotional and your spirit. And one thing I learned from cancer is that your spirit, you have yes. to live from your spirit. Right, you have to find something else. You can't let your spirit and your emotional sick at the same time. If your emotional is sick, you gotta go through that spirit, like your physical. And so that what I call I don't let my physical and my spirit get bankrupt at the same time. Right? There has to be right. something for me to draw from. And the spiritual aspect is kind of a key well being for me. And so that's what I teach, like, okay, physical, you're sick. Where am I gonna draw the strength from? Right, I can't draw it from the physical because my body is, you know, when I had my breasts, my breast was corrupt. I talk to my breasts, like I pray with them. I talk to them. I like, hey, I know why I have to take you out. It's not because I wanted to do it, but it's because now yeah. that you're corrupt, you're sick. And in order for me to get well, I have to path with you. I praise them for being the time they spend with me. And then I congratulate them for the times that they're not with me. And my family's <laughs> like, you're crazy. And I'm like, no. But these girls yes. have been a part of me forever. They have taken me through some journey because this was my sweet spot. This was where, you know, action happened when connecting level with sexuality. That's my breast was my centerpiece. And to lose them was yeah. crazy. Then I have to know that I have other parts of my body that I can go to. And I have to remember that. So that's how my approach was and how my approach is. And so I teach that too, that um, there is this well-being that is left within us to tap into. And if we can tap into it, it will help us to get through the toughest, the hardest circumstances and come back out flowing and, and find joy. So that three letter words, I'm a great component of joy. And that cancer taught me that. Well, and I love that you just said that because I feel like that's a really good piece of advice that you can give to people, not only for people who have never been diagnosed, because we want to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves before we're ever even diagnosed. We've got to know that one in eight women get breast cancer, and that is a huge statistic. And yeah. I have had friends that have said things like, why is part of your audience people who've never even been diagnosed? It's not even on their radar, especially younger women like in their 20s or 30s and 40s, it has to be on their radar. If you are a woman and you have breasts, which we do, right? You should be listening. It should be yes. on your radar. Hopefully it never happens to you ever, ever. 
but we know that one in eight women get breast cancer. And so it should be on their radar. They should be getting screened, you know, in some way. We should know that it's important to be healthy, mind, body, spirit, whatever that looks like. Because if you ever do get it, we know that we are able to move through that diagnosis so much better. And what you do, Maureen, for people in your survivorship is incredible. It is so needed. And when I was diagnosed, I was told that this was the sisterhood of all sisterhoods. And it just is. I have met the most incredible people who have taken their corrupt breasts. And <laughs> I, li- I like I like that term. It's like, <laughs> your guys were corrupt. <laughs> they have taken their trauma from the breast cancer and people have just harnessed this amazing power to be able to help other people worldwide, right? So, I mean, we've met people from all over. You and I were connected through a friend of ours yeah, here in Karen. Reno. Yeah, Karen. And such a nice I went person. to this meeting, yeah. the DOT meeting, and I met Karen and she's amazing. And she's actually introduced me to a few people. One person, um, you know, connected me to a guy who got my trademark for my logo and the name Test Those Breasts. So just all these connections and it has helped me in my own survivorship meeting people like you. So thank you. (laughs) How can people reach you? you. (laughs) Like I'm going to have this all in my show notes. How can people reach Mm you? After the whole cancer reform um, called Lock Run Fitness. And it's literally what you just said. It's to go into the community and teach, just teach. But most of my audience, women. Because even now, I have so many younger people died from yep. breast cancer in their 20s. Honestly, that I know, that I know that doesn't survive. It's more about prevention. For me, it's about prevention than even when we get there, right? But we know that that one in eight how was the statistic you just said? One in eight women. Yeah, one in eight women will have breast cancer. But the point is to to prevent mm-hmm. it, to have the tools and to deal with that when it comes so that survivorship can be whatever you think about. Right. We don't have to die anymore. We can prevent it. We can all come back and realize that this is a great opportunity for transformation. As you said, to find sisterhood. No, I had people connecting people to me like, okay. This girl, I don't know, she don't have cancer because she's just vibrant and doing her thing. And um, I have boyfriends recommending their girlfriend to talk to me about what am I doing? You know, women come all the time asking me, what are you doing? To impart that to us that we can still live vibrant lives after breast cancer. Yeah. During it and through it, right? The, The tools that we have are vast out there now and everyone is is doing this even the doctors are on a game changing it's a life changer and it's a game changing no more do we have right. to sit in silence and suffer as as you know each one teach one and i think we're learning from each of us yeah because that's the way it used to be it used to be where we had to you know women had to sit yes. in their silence there were women who said no one ever even knew that i had breast cancer because we didn't talk about that stuff now it's like blah, you know <laughs> we're doing podcasts we're doing coaching yeah. we're <laughs> yeah, so there's no shame in the game there's no shame in the game and my aim is to like teach women that still yes you can still be sexy too right you yeah. can still form that impression of you if you need to change up some clothes a little bit and shake things up a little bit, you can still you can still command the field. Totally. It doesn't have to control you. I thought I was going to lose control. my sex appeal because my breasts were going to be gone. <laughs> yes, but guess girl, what I did? I, I went and got that. photos done and I actually had her add in some boudoir pictures. Girl, and to think about that, when I had breast cancer, I didn't have a husband. And I have a husband now because I oh. found my husband during breast cancer. Because I, you know, I decided that I was going to step up my game and I was going to be the (laughs) sexiest. So I lived that life and I still dated. And somebody says, you are brave because people need people for people got divorced and you get married. I was like, yeah, because you have to determine to what is it that you want from your transformation too. It's something that it can be a lot of suffering or it can transform you. And the choice is yours. 
Well, your husband is incredibly lucky to have you. So and I'm sure that he's an amazing person as well. So, <laughs> well, I, Maureen, this has just been such a great conversation. I'm so glad we got to connect. And again, we're friends on Facebook and we chit chat all the time that way. But having this conversation with you face to face and seeing you in your beautiful outfit. I just absolutely love anybody who would like to see some amazing fashion. Maureen is your girl. <laughs> she, go to her Facebook page, check it out. Thank you for the privilege of your time. Thank you for your kind words. Uh, you know, we're here to create change, I think, you and I, and um, Kindle Spirits. And I think it's great that you're doing your show. It's great that you're finding this audience and um, to talk to Real stuff, yes. because it's real. It's not something that is fabricated. It's something that one in three yeah. women is going to be impacted. You know, they said if three women is in the room, two of you are going to be impacted with cancer. So while we cannot stop that, we can educate, we can teach, and hopefully people will listen, take the message, and um, so that it, they can have the tools when the time comes. Right. Ongoing and on that ongoing support. So people can, you know, be a mentor all the way through your diagnosis. Well, I will put all of your information on the show notes, how to reach you and all of that. And I encourage my audience that if you are going through breast cancer or any kind of difficult situation in your life, I highly recommend reaching out to Maureen. She is a ball of fire and I'm very, very honored to be her friend. And I'm hoping to meet you in person someday. I know we were supposed to take some of those trips that you're going on together. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm all about those it. girl trips. Yeah. So thank you so much for the privilege of your time. Thank your audience who are going to tune in. I so humbly accept this to be in your esteem company and to have them be on your Thank platform. you, Maureen. So thank you, guys. Bye, friend. You have a great rest of your weekend. You too. And to my audience, thank you again for joining this episode of Tesla's Breasts. And as always, I really would appreciate it. Number one, if you go to your favorite platform and rate and review this podcast, it really does help a lot. Also, if you visit my website, it's testthosebreasts.org. I have resources on there. They're ongoing, being updated. I'll have Maureen's information on there. And you can listen to my podcast there. You can donate there. It is a nonprofit. And I just appreciate everyone's support in this breast cancer journey and our sisterhood of all sisterhoods. And we will see you next time on the next episode of Test Those Breasts. Bye, Bye, Marie. Thank you. (laughs) Friends, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Test Those Breasts. I hope you got some great, much needed information that will help you with your journey. As always, I am open to guests to add value to my show. And I'm also open to being a guest on other podcasts where I can add value. So please reach out if you'd like to collaborate. My contact information is in the show notes. And as a reminder, Rating, reviewing, and sharing this podcast will truly help build a bigger audience all over the world. I thank you for your efforts. I look forward to sharing my next episode of Test Those Breasts.